So I've been working hard to come up with some new content. I just uploaded a ton of stuff. I ran into some issues because my old camera is not compatible with my new computer. So I had to upgrade the, the camera connections and all that kind of fun stuff to make sure that everything worked well. Um, so I uploaded a bunch of videos for you. Uh, just to kind of give you a heads up on what's going on, I ripped the Nova motor pretty, pretty much completely apart. Uh, all I need to do is remove the transmission bolt, the cross member of the transmission, the drive shaft, and then the two uh, motor mount bolts, and that motor's ready to come out. Um, that is, in itself is going into another project truck that sits on the side of the, of the house. It's a 1990 uh, Chevy WT plain Jane uh, 1500 with a five speed in it. Uh, right now there's a 4.3 liter in it. So this 350 will bolt right up to it. So that'll be a nice fun little uh, work uh, shop truck kind of thing. Uh, I've been <laughs> re rebuilding a, a, our shed. I bought my wife a little portable blow up jacuzzi for Christmas. And so we were converting our small shed into a World, a place to put our little whirlpool. Um, so I've had to go in, insulate it, and putting in new walls and floors. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bring that up, and it'll probably be over on my, uh, on my Collinard channel, more than likely. Uh, but you'll be able to see how I'm doing that. It's kind of a neat little project. So I've been kind of en en enveloped in that. Um, haven't really gotten much done on the Nova. I did, I did something to my back as we do as we get older and I've gone through half of a procedure to fix it so the right side of my back is fine the left side they're going to do next month um, after I get back from vacation so I've been doing little things here or there like I'm working on the snowblower right now because the carburetor decided it doesn't want to play anymore uh, Utah as many of you may know or may not know got more snow this year than I've ever seen since I've lived here and from what I understand, the other day we got record snow up to two feet in some areas. Uh, the mountains got four feet or better. Uh, so yeah, it was a pretty, pretty wild storm. Um, I haven't serviced this since I bought it in 2017. And so now I'm paying for it. Uh, it is one of those yard max I got it on Amazon, I think it was, for like two or three hundred bucks. It, it has worked great. Um, I have, have no complaints with it. Uh, when we brought it out for the season, it fired right up and everything went well, but uh, it decided all of a sudden not to work. Uh, so I walked my son through how to, you know, check for spark, check for gas, check for everything to, to see and determine what's wrong with the engine. So I showed him how to pull the spark plug out, ground it out, see the spark. I showed him how to uh, check if it, we pulled the gas line, make sure the gas is flowing. You know, pretty much everything you need to do on how to get it to run kind of thing so that he understands uh, later in his life how to fix the snowblower or fix a lawnmower or even as far as a car. Um, I think it's all good things that every every boy should know. Maybe they're not going to be the one that work on a car, but they should know how to do the minimum and or understand the minimum. So, you know, I can't emphasize enough out there, teach your son, your cousins, niece, nieces, nephews, everybody who is, who's driving a car, the basics on a car. Uh, mainly because, you know, brakes are a prime example. I had just redone the fronts on the 300. That's when I messed up my back. I still have to do the back, but in doing that, uh, my son, I taught him on his, uh, my Explorer, how to do brakes. You know, knowing how to do these things, not to the advancement level that I'm doing them, but in most cases, almost everything that you're doing on a car now, you can Google it. Or um, let me rephrase that, you can find it on YouTube. Prime example is my channel, kind of showing you everything I'm doing. And if I don't know how to do something, guess what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to YouTube to figure it out. Um, Christmas has passed and so is my birthday, so I got a few new things. Inside here is a nice new $700 TIG welder. So I'm going to be teaching myself how to TIG weld. Uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to learn. I'm still really learning how to MIG. 
I made the, everything on this car, all the custom work that I did, I did it with a $100 Home Depot or Lowe's, I don't remember where I got it, but it's one of those little tiny welders about that big. Um, so it was an experience in itself. Uh, they're not really, there's not really a, a whole bit, bunch of adjustability. And now I'm going to a TIG welder that's just the extreme. I can gas weld. Um, when I went to auto body school, I learned how to take two pieces of metal. We had to take two square pieces of metal, put them together, and we had to gas weld these two together with no rod. You had to do three of them in a row before they cut you loose on the on, into the body shop. And that was so that you fully understood how that works because almost everything you do in a restoration or a hardcore repair is you're going to get in there and you're going to do some welding, possibly. Um, at a minimum, a little bit, but you should always know how to do that. So I know how to gas weld real well. I've been told, and you can comment if you'd like on this, that if you know how to gas weld, TIG should come pretty easily to you because you've got the torch in this hand and you got the rod in this hand, just like, uh, just like gas welding. Um, that was another thing that I taught my son is this is what's called gas welding because it's an art that, you know, in all the YouTube channels that I watch, I haven't seen a lot of people do it. I was watching uh, uh, Merlin's Old School Garage out of Lake Havasu and he, he does a lot of uh, custom work and he still gas welds, which I thought was the coolest thing uh, since sliced bread. Yes, he has a regular welder, but he still gas welds. I thought that was so cool. So you're gonna get to ride along with me while I learn how to get, how to TIG weld. Um, I've got, my wife bought me everything. It's the only thing I've got to buy is the consumables and the tank of Argon. Uh, everything else she got me for, for uh, either Christmas or my birthday. And my kids, same thing. Bandit, get out of there. Come here. Get over there and lay down. My shot help is not helping today. Go lay down. Go on. I said go boy. Um, but uh, between her and my kids, they got me everything off my, uh, my list. So I've got everything I need but the consumables. I need the tank and I need uh, the little uh, sharpener for the, uh, for the uh, tungsten. I need a tungsten sharpener and I'm, I'm good there. Um, but with my back being the way it is, uh, I, could, I was out in the little shed putting up the insulation. My son came out, helped me do the higher stuff, and helped me do the ceiling and all that kind of thing. So that was really good of him, and it helped me a lot. Uh, the only thing I've got left to do is the walls. I'm going to put in uh, probably an MDF or something. I haven't figured it out yet. But because we got this snow, I'm not going out there to work because it's in the 20s. So I'm out. Um, that's been one of the biggest holdups with, with a lot of the things that I have to do. Prime example is the Nova. I need to pull the motor out, but once again, with my back, can't. if I'm under there for more than five or ten minutes, my back starts hurting so bad that I just, I, I can't do it. Now last weekend before last, I went under there to, uh, uh, I can't remember, oh, to pull the other header off, so I've got both the headers off now. And I was pulling the header off and went down there, down underneath, pull the collector apart and all that kind of fun stuff and pull, yank the header up. Still hadn't got it out of there because about three quarters of the way through it, my back started hurting a little bit and I just powered out and threw it. And then by the time I was done, and my wife's home saying, because we go out to dinner every Saturday night, she's like, okay, let's go to dinner. By the time dinner was over, my back was just angry. Um, so after the procedure, I'll be able to get a lot more done. Uh, mainly, you know, I've got what? probably 10 bolts to finish undoing and that motor's coming out and then you'll get to watch me transform the, the engine compartment and everything and I'll kind of bring you over and show you guys you know everything you're at or everything I've been working on sorry for the for the moving you around uh, one of the things I got and one of the things I, I always tell everybody is look for things uh, Facebook marketplace has been a winner for me because that block that's underneath the, all that those parts I got for fifty dollars. It's a four bolt main. Uh, it's a 1974 block out of a C30 uh, motorhome chassis. Um, you know, I know because I looked up the the VIN that was on it and everything, and it came out of a 74 motorhome, which just happens to be the same year as the Nova. So that definitely helped. 
Uh, on Marketplace the other day, I found this bad boy, a, a $320 Moroso deep oil pan, and I bought it for 60 bucks. A uh, guy wanted, you know, 80 bucks for it or what have you, um, but uh, I talked him to, into 60 bucks because I, I had 60 bucks in cash, and I didn't want to break a 20. <laughs> didn't want to break a 20. So I've already drilled it with my step bit. Um, as you can see, it's got returns on both sides now for the turbos. Uh, because I have to have returns, and I needed a deep pan anyway. I have the the regular factory uh, pan on it now, but I needed a deep pan because if you're running those turbos, you're going to run a little bit more more oil. I'm probably going to run an oil cooler too. Um, I just haven't got that far. The motor itself, I'm waiting on my uh, my uh, year end bonus to kick in uh, because I am going fuel injection on this, so. I'm going to replace the carburation with fuel injection, and I'm also going to upgrade to a computer-controlled distributor, so the whole top end will be controlled by computer. Um, that'll definitely make it uh, a lot easier. One of the hard parts I had with uh, locating the parts for this is they there are all the EFIs they make that are that sit up on top of that that uh, carburetor mount aren't boost capable. Um, I found that uh, Holly Super Sniper is. And what's really cool about it is it looks like a carburetor. Um, it's really neat. Um, all the components are in it. But uh, So I've been, I've been waiting on that to finish that up. Once that's done, I just have to uh, put the motor in. Um, I'm probably going to break it in with the carburetor on it. Um, that way I get the, the cam all broken in. Unless I change my mind, yank the intake, and pull the cam and put a roller in it. Um, I have the roller for it. I just haven't gotten around to, to whether I want to do it or not because there's a pretty good cam in there right now. Um, the other thing I've been working on is over here. I've been working on the Nova's engine compartment. As you can see, the headers are gone. Um, <laughs> as I pull the headers out, me being me, I did not pull out spark plugs and took most of them out, uh, two of them out by pulling. I'm also going to clean up that back part. That's the the connection from the trunk to the uh, to the battery. I'm going to move that switch inside the car somewhere. There's also a second switch in the trunk for it. Um, so we'll do that. Um, while the engine's out, uh, I'll be ordering new upper and lower control arms. I found them on uh, Southwest Performance, I think is the company that's called. They're like 220 bucks for the set, uh, which I thought was just fantastic because everybody else wants $1,000. Um, it was that, it, that, or I would have to box these, um, and I really don't feel like putting that kind of work into them. Um, one of the nice things about the fuel injection is the 74 comes with both um, the fuel and the return line, so I don't have, and it's steel all the way back, so I don't have to plumb the car from here back, just from here up to the fuel injection. I'm probably going to end up moving these back to the firewall. That way I can come up from the back where it's all hidden. Uh, the wiring, of course, has got to be cleaned up. The wiring is a mess. Uh, years ago, when I was storing the car, I had an aircraft hanger that I put all my cars in, along with my motorhome, and mice got into the, there's a little channel steel tube that runs behind the engine. Mice got in there and just chewed up the wires. So I had that was the whole rewiring thing that I had to do, um, hence why I'm moving everything to the trunk. Um, that brake booster is the big one. It's coming out. I've got a small chrome one, uh, the, the, uh, I think it's an eight inch, um, that's also a chrome, uh, I've also got the chrome, the whole thing is chrome, chrome or, or aluminum, one or the other. And then even the, uh, proportioning valve down below is also, uh, chrome plated. So that'll be a nice addition. Um, and then, of course, pulling the motor out, that's got to that's happen. The other thing that I'm, I'm working on at the same time is the fueling system. Because if I'm going to go ahead and put in a fueling system, I need fuel injection. Uh, I had already purchased this tank, and I've got it just kind of sitting in there because what I'm going to do is I've already got the, uh, the old tank underneath drained. I just need to pull it out, and then I'm going to mark this sucker out and then cut it open 
uh, and then drop the tank down in and I'll make a I'll make a low uh, low profile bay for it to sit in and then I've got my fuel right there at the bottom it'll it'll all come out the back to the electric fuel pump and all that fun stuff um, but yeah that's kind of the the whole setup here uh, I do need to once that's all done I'll start building the trunk out uh, so that the batteries separate and it's got its own uh, its own box I guess you'd call it um, and then I'll also uh, get everything else cleaned up here I've already got the cardboard all cut out and if you see up there in front of the tank it's all been measured out so that all I have to do is go out and buy the wood and uh, finish it up and then pretty much I'll probably upholster it I do need to clean up the the uh, tank uh, that'll be changed out to something. The trunk pop button will be there. It'll be an ele electric one, but it'll have its own lock mechanism through the alarm system. So I want to try to set it up so that when you unlock the car, it unlocks that button and you can push the button to open the trunk. Um, but yeah, I got to finish all that up. But that's kind of where I'm at with everything right now. The seats have got to come out of it. I don't like these seats. I dislike them highly. I mean, they're a nice looking little seat but I just don't like them. Uh, but that's just kind of to give you an update on what I've been working on and, uh, and such. I'll also have to remove move all these relays uh, to the back firewall. I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going to put them. The inner fenders, uh, the fiberglass inner fenders are coming out. Uh, I need to get as much air whipping through here to keep the engine compartment cool uh, because of those turbos. Um, the turbos will end up mounting probably somewhere in this area uh, and drawing cold air from the from the grill area so i've got some work cut out for me yet here but i really can't get anything in here to do anything until i mock up uh, or get the engine in and start mocking up the turbos but that's just kind of give you an update on where i've been and what i've been doing uh, yeah like i said the lawnmower <laughs> or the uh sorry snowblower but yeah that's kind of where i'm at with everything um, I'm kind of sad because if I go to the uh, electronic ignition system, I'm going to lose my blue distributor cap, uh, which I had to look high and low for. Uh, I didn't add, I got on the air compressor, the air conditioning compressor, I found a company that makes the chrome cover. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, with the powder coated, with <laughs> the powder coating, I had to scrape a little bit off because it was a little bit thick. Um, I got the resistor wire because when you run a modern alternator you have to have this resistor wire or this resistor in it otherwise that basically tells your their, your charging system to charge on the new cars but that's kind of give you an update um, haven't have been ignoring you a little bit sorry about that uh, like I said I did post everything that I found uh, give me a minute to put you back um, I did post everything that I found in the uh, archives. If you want anything specific, send me a message, uh, and I'll I'll go through anything in specifics that you want to. Also, if you're local and you want to learn this stuff and you don't know anything about it, shoot me a DM um, or a message. I'll have you come over and learn it. Um, I'm gonna put you on wrenches, but uh, you will learn how to do this. It's 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 a good thing to know. Uh, we still have to finish the back brakes on the 300. Um, those are bad, bad, and uh, those are all slotted drilled, so it's really cool. I probably will never have to replace them again in the car's life. Uh, and then we, once we've got the motor in this one and that motor in, at least in, in storage in the shed, we can start work on the Pinto. The Pinto basically needs a whole entire interior. It needs the outside painted, but it is a rust-free Arizona car that I bought my wife, uh, kind of for Christmas, whatever. Um, it was her first car, so she's got her first car again. Um, we haven't discussed color yet. I'm hoping she just stays with the brown, but we'll see. Um, but I'll give you more on that when I'm out there by that car. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. Uh, it was it, I bought it was running. Um, carburetor is rebuilt sitting over there waiting but every time I get ready to put it on there you know it's warm enough to go outside it snows and then it's right back to the 20s again so it's kind of everything all the projects are kind of log jammed uh, 
mainly because of my back and because of this goofy weather here in Utah. But uh, that kind of gives you an update on everything. The, the Mustang, I've got to pull the rear brake off of the driver's side. Something in there is broken. I'm thinking it's a spring or something because it is not acting right at all. Uh, when I was coming back from a show, it made a noise back there. It wasn't like a rear end noise. It was like a uh, uh, something breaking noise, aside from an axle. So we've got to do that project. i got to finish uh, her fair lane. I need to put in, and yeah, now she has as many collector cards as I do, just throwing that out there for her. Um, but I've got to put the speedometer cable back in, in the fair lane. I got a new one. I found one, um, finally. So that'll be uh, one of the projects that we go through. You'll be able to see how to put in a speedometer in an old car. It's a nightmare, um, but you'll be able to see how to do it. Um, and that's pretty much it on the, on the list of things that need to be done. Uh, like I said, I've been working on everything that I can work on that doesn't kill my back. But next by next month, uh, hopefully everything will be back to normal again after they do this uh, procedure on the left-hand side of my back. Um, that'll take care of everything. We're on vacation for a couple or for a week, so I won't be doing a video next weekend at all. Um, I will probably do a video tomorrow because I do want to get that that uh, transmission drained. Uh, when I went under there to look at the transmission, you know, the mounts and all that stuff, I was going to get ready to unbolt it from the engine. There was tranny fluid all over the ground. Uh, that transmission hasn't been touched since 1974 with the exception of checking the fluid. Um, I don't even think the filter's been replaced because there wasn't that many miles on this tranny or this engine. Um, so while, I've, while I'm doing it, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trans too. Um, I was going to go find me a $200 R4 and build it up a little bit, and I still may, or a $700 R4, I just haven't decided yet. Uh, the computer has the, the ability to control uh, the 4L 80 or 4L60 trans. I, if I was going to do that, I would love to go with a six-speed automatic. Um, I was going to go stick. I'm not anymore because, well, I'll have my pickup truck. It'll have a five-speed in it, and it'll have this 350 in it. It'll be. I'm going to toss a little bit of a cam in it, uh, more of a torque cam, uh, but it'll be fun. That one's about uh, 320 horse, give or take, uh, 10 or 10 or 20 horse. Um, so it'll be fun in that truck with a five-speed because that truck is one of those ones that it's a WT, which means it come with, came with nothing. Um, it did have, however, air conditioning. Um, so that's cool. I will have air conditioning in the truck. That'll be nice. Um, so both this one and the truck will have air conditioning. The nice thing about the truck is I'll be able to throw a trailer around it and tow a car. Um, you know, I'll have a truck. Uh, and it's really nice to have a shop truck to run around and get things. Uh, definitely helps. But that kind of gives you an update. If you have any questions, do drop a line, let me know, and I'll get those questions answered for you. But uh, aside from that, from do me a favor, subscribe, like. Uh, please subscribe and like. Uh, I understand you can get monetized if you get enough people uh, subscribed and liking your stuff. So uh, definitely give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe to my channel and like I said if there's anything that you want to learn send me a note um, you know you can go to sales at colinerd.net send me an email and say hey you know I'd be really interested in learning how to do this again if you're local and you want to learn something but let's say you need to put brakes on your car um, not right now outside but I would actually allow you to, to buy the parts come here and we would, I would walk you through how to do it. You're going to do the work, but I'm going to walk you through how to do it, what to look for, what to check, you know, how to do different things. Um, but, you know, those, those kind of little things are what uh, I'm really interested in teaching people how to do. I think everybody should know how to do at least the minor, you know, the, the wearables on a car, the belt, the serpentine belt or V-belt if you've got an older car how to change your oil, you know, that kind of thing. Battery, how to check your battery, see if it's bad or good. Uh, but that kind of gives you an idea. So do let me know. Uh, again, subscribe and like my channel. Uh, the more I get, the better I, off I am, I guess. Uh, watching some folks like Cletus and the Vice Grip Garage, it's remarkable how they got their start. Uh, love both their channels. Uh, 
Cletus is a little more advanced in the engine in the engines than I am. I'm still on the old school small blocks, but uh, definitely uh, definitely some good good content on both those channels. And then, like I said, I just started following Vernon's old school garage down in uh, Lake Havasu. Uh, he's local, kind of local to here. He's got friends here in Utah, and that's kind of how I learned about his channel. Uh, but yeah, I like him because he does the old stuff too. He does some diesel stuff, so there's some something in there for everybody. But yeah, definitely. Um, and but anything you want to learn, let me know. And like I say, as I uh, as I move through and start getting back on these projects, I'll bring you along. Thanks from Papa's Garage.